today I think I'm going to make a, a Commodore 64 cartridge. Uh, the other day I was online and I saw a game I thought was pretty interesting. And it was called um, Doc Cosmos. And uh, it's available for um, purchase and download. So that's what I did. I'll leave a just, uh, link in the description on where you could get this. Um, not bad. Uh, the website will get you there. It'll do, uh, it'll describe a lot more about the game. <clears throat> I found it pretty interesting because at first when I first saw the game, I thought it was a lot like uh, Montezuma's Revenge, but it really isn't. Because uh, all I saw was uh, you get keys and go through doors. It's got a it, a, a new concept to it where you can alternate between what they call timelines which is pretty cool um, yeah for example if you came up to uh, an area that you can't jump across um, one timeline might have like the present might have a bridge that could go across but if you switch to the other timeline which I think is supposed to be in the 80s 1980s there was a ladder you could go down so it had an interesting concept on how to get through some of these um, obstacles. I play, I downloaded it. I played it on on the um, the digital download. I moved over to the SD card and over on onto the other computer and uh, played a couple uh, through a couple um, levels and it was really fun. So I noticed when I bought this though, you can it comes with the uh, a disk file or the, and it also comes with a bin file which a lot of them don't come with with that bin file I can make a cartridge which I think would be fun to to do um, now when you go to the website I, again I'm not affiliated with any of these companies but I, I do promote these guys took time to make this game and they're not asking for a lot of money the, the, the default um, amount was two dollars and uh, I, I think it's worth more than two dollars or you, they also have an option here which says no thanks just take me to the downloads so you can get it for free if you want but what's a couple bucks it's worth buying it um, so I got my uh, downloads and uh, I got the bin file <coughs> excuse me and I think I'm gonna make that now it's just a 16k cartridge which is easy enough to make I have um, this is my test board that I made but I'll be making it on this one here I already had a game on here and I desoldered it that I don't I no longer use um, so the boards don't come with all the stuff on it you will you'll have to buy your if you want pins for jumpers and the capacitors I'll leave a description in the link to uh, I'll leave a link in the description for the um, where to get these also I think I had these made by um, PCB way, but the files I got from GitHub, uh, from Suko Para, Suko Para, it's his Open C64 Cart 16K. So he he made those avail available for free for download, which was nice of him, so that people like us can make ours also. Now I had to make extra cuts and notches and some of these boards because they do fit in uh, like like a standard size one with no problem but today I'm gonna be using uh, these little stubby uh, cartridges uh, I got these from the future was 8-bit but if you look at these you'll see if I can get this in here these little standoff supports uh, they don't they don't fit in there unless I cut those out so once I put them in there, it's nice and tight, but I had, I could either probably cut the plastic or the board. So it was easier to just cut the board so I didn't destroy the cartridge. It's up to you if you decide to go the same route I do. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make the cart, the EEPROM, test it in my test board to make sure it works. Once it works, then I'll just solder it over onto the hard copy and put it in the board. So, um... Let's get started. I already know it's a 16K ROM, so 
I already got uh, my uh, EEPROM here, which is a M27C128. And uh, let's double check this, make sure this is. Um, do a blank check on it. And that's blank. So we'll drag our uh, bin file over. I put that in and we'll write to it. That's almost done. I was verifying. And that should be good. Okay. Here, I'll test that real quick over here. Just to make sure it works. It's loading. And it comes up. Excellent. Okay, so. Take this out. Make sure we have it pointed in the right direction. All my pins in. Okay. I should put a new tip on this one. Let's get it ready. Pretty bad. Should get an air filter too. Just a fan. Isopropyl alcohol. And here, and I know I'm going to have to jump her. 15 and 14. I'll have to go back and check, but this one is jumpered, so those were on high. Put them on there for now. There's our final cartridge. A screw in the back. I'll make a label for it just so I know what it is. Just a simple label. I'll go back and put a see how it's a clear cartridge. I'll put a um, uh, some type of sticker over that window so I don't have to worry about if this gets left in sunlight, it won't erase my EEPROM on me. 
But uh, here, let me see if I can get you guys in the shot here, and we'll try it over here on test one. Let's see if I get a better shot. Not really. And there it is. I have a joystick. Oh, drop the joystick. That's not a good one. Gonna be able to play this one handed. So you go over, you'll see it'll give you tips like almost like a, a trainer at the beginning. And uh, you want to get through, you need a key. So this is what I kept out. It was kind of like Montezuma's. So if you run over, oh, hit that, you go back through, push up the jump, because your button's going to be what changes you through the timelines. There's my red key. And it says collect colored keys to open uh, doors of the same color. So back we go. Yeah, I can't do this one handed too well. Oops. <laughs> Think it's easy? Okay, so here is the device that you're going to pick up. And you'll see this is where it's going to change. And, well, that was easy. Okay, I'm going to hit the button to go. Now you see how it changed the graphics? This is the other timeline. So, uh, each one, this one, I, you can jump further, but you can't, it's not as controlled. So, like on this timeline, you can see the ladder. Let's see if I can get up here without dying. Nope. Nope. Huh. I don't want to go the other way. And we can go down the ladder. And this is the machine that's going to allow you to these power ups. You can only change between timelines three times until you find another one of these little machines to repower up. So, see, I can change back, but it cost me one of my power things. So I'll just go back and touch that until I find another one. And let's see here. Like here's a good example. This would be the present timeline, and there's a bridge here. But back in whatever 1980, there wasn't. So if you're in this timeline and you're wondering how you're going to get across, you're probably going to have to switch to get where there's a bridge or some other way to get there. Whoops. Well, there's another one to refuel here, so. But, but that's basically the game. I, I thought this was a, a neat concept. They did a real good job on it. And it only fits on a 16K cartridge. So um, This is something I wanted to have, too. And I do think it's worth buying. It, it's These guys, you know, spent a lot of time on uh, programming this stuff and it being brand new. Um, I, I just think it's great they still make these this, in this day and age for this stuff. So... That's all I had for today. Thanks for watching.